Hey guys, it's Ben the Coin Geek at Old Pueblo Coin, and uh, just a reminder: uh, if you didn't know, um, we make videos about coins. So let's start with this one, 1879, uh, Carson City, and this one's nice and meaty, folks. The 79 Carson City, one of the tougher dates for the Carson City coins. Uh, I got this nice little group of PCGS graded dollars in, and uh, overall, this this one's really this is a really nice coin. It's lacking in luster. There's just barely a hint of luster. And so as you tilt it, if you look around the lettering, like the word United, you know, there's actually just a little, little bit of movement there, but hardly anything. It's almost imperceivable, inconceivable. Uh, 1879 Carson City, really nice, really nice coin. Uh, PCGS XF40. And, uh, Pretty piece, nice example. You see a really nice um, amount of hairline activity still on there. Lots of hair. Tough, tough coin. This coin uh, in this condition is uh, about a $1,500 coin retail currently, give or take. Give or take, they're kind of all over the place here. Next up is a 79. And uh, little known fact, these 79s from the New Orleans Mint, a little bit tougher. We see a lot of 79 S's. This is a nice even coin. Uh, looks like it's mostly white. Got a little spot there on the N in United, but mostly white. And then you've got a little bit of tone right below the date. Uh, you know, and quite a bit of chatter, but really nice original look to it overall. MS63, you know, coin that's going to be, you know, that 400 ballpark, give or take, uh, in, in today's market on that guy. Kind of fun, kind of fun seeing a 79.0. All right, next up, okay, so some of my favorite coins, uh, I will talk about these quite a bit um, to people who will listen, and that is if you can find really choice ADS Morgans, lots of times because they're kind of tough on them, you'll see coins that are just stunning, and lots of times they'll be seemingly a grade different than what they are. Now, this one, I'm not, I'm not arguing this is better than the, than the grade. You'll see it's got that one hit to the right of the eagle, but the rest of the coin is just really, really lovely. The um, the cheek is kind of how you want the cheeks to look, really. You know, at different angles, when you look at it, that cheek has a lot of different um, just luster flowing off of it. You know, and at certain angles, it looks like there's this, this like whiteness like that. You see the whiteness on the cheek. Um, that is actually that uh, from the planchet itself, kind of that roller rolled out planchet mark that uh, is embedded in, in coins. This one, uh, MS66, you know, and really nice example. If you're not collecting Morgan dollars and you want a nice one, you just want one example, that's the type of coin to get, you know, that ADS and 66, you know, because that'll be something like a $350 coin currently, uh, kind, of, kind of fun. All right, next up, we're moving into a different mint, a different city, different state. The Carson City Mint here, this 1881. Always a always a desirable coin, of course, and we see a lot of them with the with the higher. Uh, we see a lot of 81 CCs in uncirculated. That's what I'm trying to say. It's interesting because it's a coin that you don't see circulated examples very much. This is true of the 81 CC and the 85 CC, which are scarcer dates, but uh, to find them in certain grades it's actually harder to find them in circulated grades sometimes. That coin's a nice MS63, and uh, it runs somewhere in that 700, 700 plus range on, on that one. Uh, that next up is the, the sister to that is you get into the 85. Your 85 Carson City, uh, this one looks to be just a little bit nicer. You know, it has contact marks on it, but not quite as much. Uh, as you see on some of the coins we get, and probably a little bit fewer than the one that was on the last coin. Once again, you have a reverse coin. <laughs> it is a broken record time. The reverse of these coins where they're just stunning. This uh, 85cc has one of those backs to it that you won't forget. And uh, this one they called MS64. So the 85cc, they only made 228,000 of these guys. And that 81cc, 296,000. And so these are really kind of cool coins because, uh, you know, they're just they're just not that many made, and uh, 
they just seem to me to be, you know, kind of more in the value range when you consider how few of them there are. Now, I know it's, like I said, a little bit more of a hoard coin where most of them that you found are uncirculated, but still uh, neat, neat coins to have. Uh, next up, uh, second verse, same as the first, uh, and this one actually is going to be one grade lower. This one has, you know, the reverse has a couple contact marks on it, but still is stunning. It has just a few more contact marks than this other one here. So the 64 and 65, I think this uh, 63 and 64, the 63 is going to be, you know, closer to the 800 and 64 is closer to 900. I got to get my bearings straight. It's not just a seafaring thing anymore. Not once I'm here messing stuff up. All right. Next up, one of the semi-key dates is 1885 from the San Francisco Mint. Uh, really an example that you have, uh, you've seen probably before. What's interesting about this one, of course, is that you've got uh, a really strong PL surface finish to the reverse and yet the obverse, it's like this is just your classic luster coin. It's not anything really special as far as your, uh, you know, that proof-like finish. So if we take a closer look at this, you'll see a few contact marks up in there. Um, overall, not too bad. So like when you see these lines that are moving now the way I have them, they're horizontal. That once again, those are those are built in, baked into the planchet from the planchet being rolled out. That's what those lines are. You'll see those roll through the design, all that whiteness and those lines. That is, those are not scratches. It's a little bit different than sometimes when you see stuff with scratches on it. But I just want to show you this this uh, reverse, and just like glass, right? I like when you know I can I can see why people really get attracted to just getting into the PL coins, um, you know. But at the end of the day, I appeal I appeal wins, right? So that's something to just keep in mind. Anytime you have a coin that's going to have strong eye appeal, it's going to be easy to sell again later. Uh, that coin is over $700, the 85S and MS64. Uh, pretty tough piece. And we're going to stay in this same lane here with an 87S. Uh, 87S has come uncirculated a little bit more frequently than the 85S does. This coin is... Uh, mostly mostly white a little bit of toning like you see the toning over to the star in front of her cheek in front of her chin in this one they called an ms63 you know and once again kind of just take a minute to kind of see you know both these coins are really very comparable just kind of a touch difference um, judgment call on those lots of times the difference between a three and a four isn't always too much but uh, you know it's the overall quality of the coin on both sides is going to help you determine, you know, this this one has a has the finishes on the reverse that are not as nice as this 80 uh, 85s was. The reverse on the 85s was a little bit nicer, but a coin uh, in 63, the 87s is close to a $400 coin in 63. So now after this, I'm going to blow through a couple coins here real quick uh, because we've got coins that are worth uh, owning and loving, but uh, still I'm going to just speed it up a little bit here because we've got an 82 and an 84 cc, both coins that are in nice newer holders and uh, attractive coins. The 82, you know, I got a black spot on there. Let's take a second to look a little closer at that and just see that's just a little bit of a toning spot. Kind of thicker. That's the type of thing that if someone tried to, tried to conserve the coin it would probably leave a little white spot i would think um you know it might they might be able to get rid of it all the way but it would leave a little white mark um this coin has really open fields it does have some bigger distracting marks just kind of like right in front of the chin you know something like that and for different collectors these things mean different things because you can have a coin with uh, the same grade and you know one person picks one coin over the other and uh you know some people they want to avoid certain looks like they might want to avoid a coin because it has a spot on it or they might want to avoid a coin that this one they call 63 they might want to avoid a coin that has really beat up cheeks you know maybe they don't mind the field so much or maybe the opposite maybe they don't care if the cheek has some hits maybe they want the field to look better than that and so you know you'll see a bunch of coins graded 63 
but you know if you're a collector and you're thinking about long term you know you kind of figure out what you like and here's another one where the obverse is cracked up and the reverse looks like it's untouched come on folks it's it's one of the most bizarre things in the world to me it's just I'll, it'll never get it'll I'll never get used to it okay speaking of getting used to stuff uh, you know this is one of those moments where you just kind of hold the phone for a second and say wait a second 1893 what mint mark we got on there and yep there's the s this is this is the the king of the collection right so anyone who's doing Morgans you know already that it's really tough to get a really nice 1893 s uh, and low-grade ones are you know beat up ones are a couple grand low-grade ones are a few thousand this one is really a nice example. Uh, it has a lot of originality to it. Um, and this one they called a fine 15. And, uh, you know, it's something that's going to be north of 5,000 in this market currently. Um, really nice to see you've got this kind of that jawline right there. You can still see the crease there on the jawline, which is fun. You know, I'm just talking about areas that turn flat after a while. Uh, the other thing on this is I usually point out how to tell the counterfeits on these and I don't know this one has a little bit of schmutz in there where you've got the the T in Liberty has a little mark that comes down from the center and I'm not I'm not going to get it in this one because that it's a little dirty up in there but there's a few little things that you can tell from the die on this coin uh, and that's something I've got other videos that talk about that and you can look at that so uh, and uh, not not quite last not quite least, uh, another tougher date, you know, 1895, and another San Francisco mint coin. And, um, you know, this is another coin that has a really low mintage to it. A lot of detail here. This one they're calling an XF40. I think we had another coin earlier in the night that was an XF40. And the 95S. That's a coin that has a pretty low pr production rate. Um, you're talking about 400,000 coins. The 93S, only 100,000 made, but the survival rate seems to be a lot lower than that. Uh, interesting coin, a little bit brighter than some of the other coins also. It, <laughs> it also has, uh, th this looks like it was in a book, an album, and that little discoloration there, I'm kind of intrigued by as I look at it because I think that shouldn't be on the coin that is straight graded like it should be taken off of the coin before it was put in the holder uh, if you guys see what I see I think that's what that is I mean it looks like through the plastic that that is um, just some some uh, residue from being in an old album and you want to make sure that stuff's off uh, yeah I'm, I've got I'm scratching my head a little bit on that coin uh, which is an expensive coin. I mean, an XF40, it's like $1,500, so $1,600. It's not not cheap, not cheap at all. Um, 030, this guy here, of course, they made uh, millions of them, and they're actually still pretty scarce. I mean, they're still hard to find, uh, but they, they did find a hoard of them, but for a long time, they was considered the most rare coin in the Morgan set, and uh, this one here... PCGS called an MS-63. A lot of original toning to it. And, uh, you know, the fields are are nice. It has a little bit of some, uh, you know, some, like, lines there that are, you know, not, not scratch-worthy, but, you know, they're not helping the coin out at all for the grade. And a lot of this just a little bit of original toning to it. But I, I would guess if it weren't for those couple lines on the cheek there, it might grade a point higher. You know, overall, it doesn't have as many contact marks as some of these other coins that we have looked at uh, today. All right, and we've got uh, 1878. What was this guy? This is the uh, Philly Mint. And it's the seven over eight tail feather weak variety. So you can see right dead center over the uh, third and fourth tail feathers. There's other tail feathers underneath it. Uh, the strong variety, I, if I remember right, there's the tail feathers a little bit farther off to the right and stick out a little further. But 
you can see them sticking out from under there. It's a real popular variety. It was 1878 that had so many dye gyrations that they're all over the place as far as the type. So MS-63, uh, you know, it's got a lot of little contact and bag marks on it, and that is a coin that I think is priced in that two and a half range ballpark. Uh, and then last but not least, we're gonna go back in time and pick up one more, one more Carson City. Some of you knew this was a Carson City as soon as you saw it based on the overall strike in the rim. And it's another one that really has, I like the original frostiness to it. Uh, a lot of original kind of snow white look going on here. And the reverse is really nice. The obverse has a real clean field in the back. The cheeks have that kind of typical bag mark look to them. But uh, up close, sometimes, sometimes looking up close doesn't help you understand the coin. Uh, as much as it does just kind of get in your hand and rotate a little bit and say okay it's got it's got its beauty marks there but you know we can live with those a nice ms63 coin and this one's uh these guys are currently north of 700 in the market today but if you watch this video years from now maybe they've doubled maybe they're half i don't know things move around quite a bit in the coin market so anyway guys uh just some fun new items from uh, pcgs Thanks so much for watching. I'm Ben the Coin Geek. You can subscribe by clicking on the owl button in the corner and watch more videos on the right side of the screen. Thanks.